Hi, this is Drake, and in this video, we're going to be talking about effects and making effects in Martin MPC slash Onyx. Um, effects like chases, pants, tilts, things like that uh, allow to add uh, movement and dynamic to your light show and uh, your set. So let's dive right in and talk about effects. So we're going to be talking about recording effects. So we're going to select our Viper group here, and we're going to start with just making a chase. And a chase is an intensity fade on and off throughout the fixtures or a giant group of all the fixtures. So we're going to go to our intensity here and we're going to go to full. Now, with all these parameters, you have pan, tilt, you have color, you have gobos. They all have this effects tab, which is secondary to the main tab here. So under intensity, if we click our effects under the intensity tab here, this brings up a whole new window for us to be making effects. Now, uh, this is our swing. So this is, let's go over to our 2D plan so you can actually see. These are our fixtures and uh, these are the beams that are on. Uh, so let's give it a speed first. So our speed is going to be, let's just go at uh, 113 BPM, 60%. And uh, the swing, so right now it's at stop. So it's actually not going to move at all. You can do uh, anywhere between 1 64th, so it's slightly changing intensity, um, all the way to full, uh, whoa, that's 2 to 1. You can even do 1 to 1, which 1 to 1 is straight 100 to 0 uh, intensity. So it's going from 0 to 100 um, at 113 beats per minute. We can slow that down. So now it's at 28 beats per minute, so it's fading in and out. This right now is in a whole group of one. So it's doing this chase as one group of fixtures. A lot of times you want to do chases through your fixtures. So that's where the effects timing comes in. So this is your wave per X and your step per X. Uh, this is per beat per minute. That's what the X is, um, this, this swing here. So a wave, if we selected eight, it's now going to wave through all eight fixtures. We can turn that off and we can go step per eight and it's going to step one at a time. Doesn't really look as smooth. I would recommend sticking with the wave. All right, as you can see, we have our fixtures chasing um, from left to right here through our fixtures in this giant loop. Can look cool for some sets. I don't think it looks that great, but it could be what you're going for. Um, we're going to do it a little bit differently and I'm going to show you what I think looks a little bit better. So let's uh, clear the console here. And we're going to select our fixtures. Um, and we're going to make our intensity at full, like before. We're going to go to our timing. And over here in this mask, we're going to drop it down. We're going to do fan mirror per X. And then we're going to go four on our wave instead of eight um, because we want it to mirror. So half of eight is four. We're going to go back to our effect. We're going to make it a one to one again. And then let's give it a time. So we'll. 28 BPM. And now you can see it's fading from outside to in the as the chase is going instead of left to right. And it's doing this symmetrical, keeping them in pairs kind of chase, which I find looks a lot more appealing. Uh, moving your fixtures and affecting them in pairs instead of individually across or the other direction. Um, we can also change our direction here if we go this way, changing our mode. Now it's going from inside to out instead of outside to in. Um, there's just different ways you can do it. But I tend to find that this looks a lot better for effects, especially chases. Okay, so we have our chase. Uh, let's talk a little bit about pans and tilts using the effect engine. So let's clear our console. And we're going to select our fixtures again. And we're going to give it an intensity of full so we can see what we're doing. And instead of clicking on the effects tab under intensity, we're going to go to pan and tilt then the effects tab. Now, as you can see, we have a swing pan and a swing tilt because this is a multi-parameter function. Um, instead of intensity, it's just the swing and the speed. Under pan and tilt effects, you have swing pan, swing tilt, and then the speed. Um, so we're going to do the same thing. We're actually going to group these again. We're going to do fan mirror per X. We're going to do four. Um, and then we're going to go up here and we're going to do a uh, pan. So let's give it a pan of an eighth. This is uh, a one-to-one -one would be 
um, all the way from one side of its panning radius to the other side of its panning radius. Um, so a lot of times that looks way crazy because it's going super left and super right. Um, so you want to make it, you know, around an eighth or a sixteenth. So it's like subtle movements. Um, and then we're going to give it a BPM. Uh, so we're going to give it some time. So that's 19. And as you can see here, um, our uh, fixtures are now moving left and right. Um, but again, we're doing it in groups of two. So these two are crossing, the outside ones are crossing in at the same time. So everything's moving in this symmetrical uh, wing that we have going on here. Um, you can also do the same thing with, let's stop that, with your tilts. And as you can see, our fixtures are tilting up and down in a wing. Same idea. So you could have them pointing at the stage and point, swinging out into the crowd, those types of effects. Um, so now we want to record this. So we want to record uh, our pan and tilt effects. We're going to make a, our tilt effect that's maximum. Let's scale it down. OK, there's an eighth. We have our effect running. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to click record. And then we're going to uh, just do pan and tilt because we don't actually want it to store the intensity. We just want to store the effect. Um, and then we're going to click on our thing. We're going to type in a uh, Viper Pan. And we're actually going to select Override this time. Instead of Qlist or Submaster, we're going to click Override. Override's in. Let's clear our console. Now, I can turn this up. It's not going to do anything because the intensity is not going of our fixtures. So if we actually select our fixtures again and turn on our intensity, now you can see that our effects are going. So let's uh, show one more thing real fast with this. Um, I'm going to take my Vipers and I'm going to uh, record an intensity here. Just intensity. We're going to do Viper. We're going to record Submaster. And we're going to clear console. Back into our view here. So the reason why we store these separately is so that way we could have our intensity. So we can just have our fixtures on, controlling our intensity, and then control our effect. And you can control your effect subtly. The more you turn it up, the more it's going to turn on. So if you actually wanted to make the speed a lot higher or the width um, a lot higher, um, you could store it higher and change it on the fader. Usually I would do one or the other, your speed or your um, width on the fader, not the both at the same time because that can look a little funky. Um, but then we can also just control our intensity. So for dramatic movements, we can have the pan still going, the fixtures are still moving, and at a certain point of the song or the music, you can bring in your intensity and that adds that like shock and awe factor, the big movement. Um, and that's why you want to store your movements and your effects separate from your intensity fader. So that was a basic overview of effects uh, in Martin, MPC, and Onyx. If you want to get more in depth with this software, make sure to check out our other videos.